What is happening, y'all? Welcome. I'm back to the walkthrough, and it's time to tackle the dangerous wasteland filled with wildlife trying to kill you. Australia. No, but in all seriousness, we're heading to Kaled. Now, Kaled is... Uh, it's a really weird region, to be honest. Um, because while we're level appropriate for this, there are certain enemies, like this guy, that are going to obliterate you. So, the general rule of thumb for Kaled is you don't mess with the birds, and you don't mess with the dogs. Uh, besides that, we'll do just fine here. But yeah, those guys in particular, no bueno. Uh, which, on that note, one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to go over to Isolated Merchant Shack. Now, you should have this place, because if you remember from the ball route, we ran on over this way, and then from there, we ran on over here, we grabbed some stuff, our, uh, I think it was our 8 Sobering was over here, and then I grabbed you all that, and then we went over here. So, real fast, hop to this Merchant Shack. And we are going to pick up an item just to make things a little bit easier. Now, quick reminder, don't come here at night. Uh, this does have one of those ball-bearing hunters, and that thing will whoop your ass at this point in the game. Like, you, you won't stand a chance at all. It'll just obliterate you. But anyway, talk to this guy, and this is what we want. The Beast Repellent Torch. So that's going to make our life a lot easier here. Um, do I need these? I don't think I need these. I have two held. I'm fine. Well, once we have this, we are going to head on over to the Smoldering Church first. And there's uh, one thing over there that we're going to do, because there's an invasion over there. And I remember back when we were here before, I mentioned, you know, sneak out the side of the church, don't worry about the invasion. Um, we're going to obliterate this thing now. We are, are more than strong enough to just let this thing invade us. You can always tell if the invasion's working, because you'll get dismounted. So you can see how my horse now is grayed out. That means the invasion is going to work. It also means murder will commence. So y'all shouldn't have a problem with this. You're going to... More than likely, you're just going to obliterate this NPC. Kind of like that. You get the sacred scorpion charm. Um, scorpion charm is a little iffy, to be honest. They cause you to take more damage. Where is that? I don't know where that marker is at. There it is. Uh, they cause you to take more damage, but they also buff a certain damage source. So with this case, you do more holy damage, but you take more damage overall. So definitely a, a bit of a double-edged sword. Um, I, I personally, I'm not usually a fan of anything that's going to cause me to take more damage. It's just not, you know, I don't like sacrificing mitigation. So before we really jump into this zone, of course, we have been here briefly. Uh, you know, we did a couple things. We kind of ran through here at the start of the game to grab some early stuff for mages. Um, we went over here to get the moon veil early on for mages. We got a great sword out of here from the cart for strength builds. So just a reminder that there may be loot that you're like, wait, he didn't grab blah, blah, blah. And we, if you're just tuning into the series, we did. It was just in an earlier episode. Um, you know, one of such thing being like over here. There's there's some loot over in here, but we've grabbed all that stuff already. So anyway, we're gonna head on out, and I'm actually going to put on the beast repellent torch just to show you exactly what this thing does. It's pretty awesome. So I've had mixed results in my testing. Um, I have found that it does work against dogs. It does not work against the birds, but I'll show you all what I'm talking about in a second. Um, these guys, you know, they're not gonna really do much. You can... Oh, God, as I say that, one of them rushes me. It, it's like those zombies from before, except now they, they explode and they do rot. But if you want to blow them all up, I mean, that's real satisfying to do. So just like, boom, 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 boom. Uh, but as you can see, we're not really getting much from them in terms of souls. Uh, so anyway, I mean, what I wanted to show real fast is the Beast through Talent Ted Torch. And we can grab this thing along the way. Oh no. Alright, we're a little flame. And now that the torch is out, you'll notice that the dogs are staying away. Even if I run up on top of the dog, it's not gonna hurt me. Now, this has been really weird in my testing. For the most part, it works like this. Like, if I take away the torch, all of a sudden the dogs aren't, they're not being as kind anymore. So pull it back out. Pull back out. Pull that torch out. I said, hey, hey, calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. It's okay. It's okay. And it should work for the most part. I've seen a couple instances where the dog gets uh, a little goofy, and that doesn't help. So, you know, just food for thought. And like I said, it's not going to help against the birds. The birds do not care. 
but this will definitely help with the dogs. So right here is the great sword that we got. Really, really good weapon for strength builds. One of the best weapons for strength builds, actually. Uh, besides that, there's like some bolts and a rune arc over here. So this is the bolts. Oh, this is the rune arc. Oh, remember you get iframes. Well, oh man, that was a fast opening. All right, we go get that rune arc. Just to kind of show the bird, I can. Oh god. Ow. Let me let me try and get some damage in here. Yeah. So look at that damage. This, this bird does not mess around. Frostbite's gonna help a lot. And if you can kill them, I mean, look, I've got almost two thousand souls for killing that dude. But you know, the birds are—they're not easy. And the dogs really aren't easy. They're—they're they're just very. They're very aggressive enemies. They like to head slam you and do all sorts of stuff. And the dog, you can see, 300, 300 runes! It's nothing! So, in general, I would just avoid the dogs and the birds. Uh, I, I, like I said, I don't think they're going to be worth your time. Uh, what we, is going to be worth our time, though... Grab the somber four. And then we need to make our way... I'm trying to get out of combat here so I can mark. Uh, but we're going to be making our way on over for the Erd Tree to get Green Burst and then Fire Shrouding. So that's the Erd Tree right there. I was planning on going there first, but I wanted to show off the dog stuff. So just to, to better show it where we're at from the church right here, we just head right along the coast. And actually, let's just go there. We'll make this a little bit easier. It's always good to, to get those trees done and out of the way. Because, you know, you get more stuff. You get more potential tears. Maybe something that you really want in your flask. And to be honest, Kayla, it's probably going to take, I'm guessing, four-ish episodes. Uh, we're going to be working kind of through... Like, the entry of Kaelid, and then we'll have an episode looking more at the, the central portion of Kaelid, and then we'll have an episode that looks more at the, uh, ow, ow. We'll have an episode that's focused on, like, southern Kaelid and, and making our way towards, like, the bosses and whatnot. All right, Mr. Boss Thing. Did you know trees? Hey, fire! They also hate frost. Oh, he rotted me. And rock can be really annoying to deal with because it's just, it's like poison, but just way worse. So it's constantly going to be taking you down. Get rid of that. Bring this down. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna we're gonna put that right on the bar now. Actually. Probably a good call. You're gonna want these the, the preserving boluses, because man, stuff sucks down here. Uh, but anyway, green burst crystal tier as well as the flame shrouding crack tier. The flame shrouding is just like the other three we picked up, so it is a boost to that specific damage type. Uh, short duration, good to like pop at the start of a boss fight, put out as much damage as you can type deal. And the other one, I believe, gives us a... I don't remember, it either extends our stamina bar, or it, uh... I'll we'll just look in a second here. I'm not even sure which I have on. Those two. So, burst is stamina recovery speed, which, which is nice. Um, so we have our four knots, and we have our magic flame, lightning, and holy. So, doing good on tears. Uh, anyway, let's see, Erd Tree Catacombs. Uh, this is a gargoyle-based catacomb, so we don't need to worry about holy stuff here. We're gonna head down the stairs, though. There's gonna be lots of gargoyles here, just waiting to try and ambush you. We got one there. Now, this elevator does not have an early roll-off. It's one of the few, so just kind of wait for it. Get all the way to the bottom. Head down this path. OK, 
Okay, get that. I think that's it. Always make sure you're grabbing the glove worts down here, because I know a lot of people have been they've been missing them, and they're like, hey, how do we get our you know how do we do our upgrades? And it's the glove worts. They don't you know because they don't you don't pick up the glove worts the same way you do a, uh, a consumable item like smithing stones. The glove worts, for the most part, you're always going to find them just as bushes down in these graves, and that's how you upgrade your stuff. So stop this. We're putting messages on top of the damn lever. But anyway, so hit that for the door. I'm going to run back this way. We're going to hit the elevator and then hop off. Oh man, I hope I hit mute in time. It's had like a super intense sneeze started as soon as I hit the mute button. Whew. Okay, got him down. Let's continue along. So, as you can guess, it's a swamp filled with rot. Um, let me actually get over here, check my notes. So, uh, side path. Side path in the rot area. Okay, so yeah, going straight, that brings us to the boss. We don't want to do that yet. We want to do the side path first. And then... This is the crab room. Grab the golden rune. Grab that. Come on, boys. Everyone group up. Chilled crab for dinner, anyone? After that, head on up here. There's gonna be a gargoyle ambush just around the corner. This was like, this was one of the only ones, like, I mean, there's lots of ambushes, but if I write down, like, there is an ambush, it means it's one that you would definitely want to look out for. The doubles probably waiting to just attack you from behind. That's how they get you, because you're, you're fighting this dude, and then all of a sudden the other two are on top of you, and by that point, it's too late. They've already got you. Go on over here and grab that. Uh, Impulp heads, it's not bad. At this point in the game, I might even consider using this myself. What were you, intelligence? This just boosts up our endurance by two. I mean, you know, more endurance is, is great. Uh, I actually use this, I think, for like a huge part of the Let's Play. But these are, these are just solid helms to use early. I mean, who doesn't want more endurance, right? Great love wort. And that's a five. So we know the gang is going to be getting leveled up. Grab this guy. We use those to make more uh, rock cleansing stuff, so obviously good. Okay, stop. It's over. Just let it end. Um, I wouldn't worry about killing these things. They're they're not really worth it. They're more just kind of a nuisance. So instead, just run around grabbing the grave glove where you see the grave violets, all that stuff. And after you look like you're clear, we'll head on back. And now we're just taking that same route. Remember how I, we ignored the path? So this is where we went at the start. That was that path, which we ignored it because we just popped out from there. But anyway, instead, drop back down. This time we're gonna run straight on through. I wonder if we have, I think we picked up fire cleanse me already. I need to check, that would be actually really good to run in this zone. Uh, so this boss fight is terrible, and not terrible in the sense of like, it's gonna be hard man, I hope you can handle it. I mean terrible in the fact that it's just terrible. You know those, those stupid weird cats? Yeah, well now we're gonna fight Double stupid weird cats. I know. How inventive, right? I like to kill the magic one first just because it's more annoying. If they both are gonna go for the summons, I'll just stomp them down. Oh my god, stop it, cat! So annoying.
Okay, it's gonna do its flames. I'm just gonna back away. And you get the Mad Pumpkin Head Ashes. Now, Pumpkin Head isn't qualified as a legendary, so you can use regular ashes to upgrade him. To be honest, if you just want a tank, like, you're not really worried about it getting in damage. You just need something that's the beef, and it's just going to be up front. Like you're playing a pure mage, or, or maybe an archery type build or something. Pumpkin head's actually really nice, because you'll remember that with that big iron head, weapons would bounce off of it, and that remains true with the summon. So all in all, definitely a a decent choice if you if you just want to tank summon, because got that big old head, it's going to block a lot of attacks. Uh, but anyway, from there, we already ran by the Greatsword Caravan, so that's done. Runark and Bolts. Uh, and then south from there, we have the Kalem Ruins Grace, so we'll just start from here. This is why I should just follow my notes, because we were going to go that way anyway. It's alright, it won't take long. Oh my god, don't run off the cliff. riding out with this. I haven't tried it while riding, but I'd imagine it also keeps them away if you have this out. And it doesn't look like they're coming for me. So next we have the Kalem Ruins. Well, mm, down south for Kalem Ruins. Fire Grease Butterflies Double Pumpkin. I, uh, let's see if I want to do this first. Yeah, why not? So we're gonna we're gonna show a strategy. I'm not super fond of this because I have a feeling it's going to get nerfed. Uh, we are heading to, 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 to like right over here, roughly. Um, so one, one thing that we're seeing a lot of right now is people using sleep on bosses. And it's a little bit iffy because it's a new status and frankly speaking I wouldn't be surprised if it gets nerfed in the PvE context of this game. Um, you know, I just don't see... I don't see FromSoft allowing players to put bosses to sleep over and over again. So, I'm gonna show it to y'all. And then, you know, if it doesn't work, you just have to get good. Uh, you'll see there's a couple training at lilies around here, but of course there's also two birds that are going all crazy on you, so... I would not really recommend wasting too much time. And that is the Sword of St. Trina. This is a sleep sword. Okay, now we're just going to go right back out east to where that grace was and do the, the ruins over there. So the whole reason coming on out here, I wanted to grab the sword, assuming I can even use it. I can. I have enough int because of my great rune active. Actually, before I go do anything else, let me... We'll reset and we'll spend some souls because I'm sitting on a lot. Getting that dexterity up. Okay, uh, right on in here, there's Fire Grease Butterflies, and then the Visage Great Shield. Which is a pretty beefy Great Shield. It's definitely one of the beefiest. It is not the beefiest, but it's up there. Um, pretty interesting art on it as well. You, uh, just keep shooting fire out of the shield. So we grab the Fire Grease, the Butterflies are... And butterflies are like a consumable anyway, but they're by one of these. Ow! They're by one of those things. There we go. Smoldering butterflies. Uh, these things, this is pretty interesting. I don't know if I can pull one off. Let's see. Nope. Ah, it's not gonna work. It saw me too fast. So you can plunge attack those things. Um, we need to get higher though, I think.
You can see that big... I'm gonna, let me try this. I don't know if I can do it with the horse. I've never actually tried to plunge attack one of them, but... Yeah, I'd have to come down from a cliff. Well, anyway, it should be worth a bunch of damage if you can pull it off, but instead we'll just go down here into this hole. Um, I guess we can do this real fast. Grab this last guy. It's all junk. Great dragonfly head. Like, ooh, wow. Needed some of that. Alright, so this fight is double pumpkin head. Um, now, the way this sword works is the weapon art will do like a wave of sleep. And if a target falls asleep, it should stay asleep for the majority of combat. So I'm going to try and show off this strategy. But like I said, I'm not, I'm not too, I'm not too keen on it. I am not big on, on stuff like this. To me, this feels, I don't know. It feels very iffy. Because if, you know, one target, if like your summons end up waking a target up or something. You know, or it's like this, we're sitting here like desperately trying to get it off. You know, trying to make the dudes go to sleep. And you can see it's it's slowly building up. Now they're now they're in sleeping mode. But you know, I don't know. To me, that felt very, very iffy. Just trying to get it off. So the strategy's out there. If y'all wanna be big hands of that, go for it. I mean, like, look how fast we just killed it. Like, this is, see, that's, I think that's why I don't, I don't know. They're like, you gotta use sleep. Sleep's so good. And I'm like, I mean, kind of. Or you could just, you know, kill the target. I mean, Horfrost does crazy damage. Our Glaive does crazy damage. Like, it's, I don't know. It doesn't feel necessary, and it feels gimmicky. So, I have made y'all aware of it. If you decide to utilize it, that's, that's your own decision, but, you know. Like I said, I don't, I don't know. I don't like gimmicky tactics. We were talking about this on stream, and I feel like the whole, the whole point of this series is I'm trying to, you know, go through and, and teach y'all things about the game, teach y'all some combat stuff, teach y'all general tactics. I don't want to rely on, on gimmicky stuff like that, you know. Like, there's the machine gun great shield right now, but, you know, that's, that's gonna go past for sure. Um, anyway, so, I was gonna go here, but I went there early to show off that. Um, from there, though, we were just gonna head south. So there's like a uh, There's a shiny hanging from a branch that is a sombering four and then we get down here for uh, Grace and Fort Gale, so we're just gonna go by one two three real fast just to recap one two three but Yeah, I mean any anything that's anything that's gimmicky like that and has the the potential to be patched up It's not something I'm usually going to support just cuz you know, who knows? No, maybe I'm off base. Maybe it'll be in the game for till the end of time. I would rather instill into you good fundamentals. Might need to kill this bird. You can already hear this guy. Go ahead, hit him with a throwing knife to get him down. Is there a somber four? As we continue on south. You can see there's a grace over there, and you can see we have one of our hidden boys, so we'll just wait. See, these things are gonna be easy now, because we got stomp. Horfrost, one horfrost stomp, they're done. Glaive side attack would also work really well, but keep an eye on that. They feel like they're slowly inching closer. I don't think they'll make it over here, but. On where are you at? Here it comes. Now we go. Flame of the Red Mains. So, I believe this might be our first fire Ash of War. So, if you want to have uh, cool fire attacks, now they are yours. Okay, let's get through Fort Gale. Uh, so this place is pretty easy. It's, I mean, it's, honestly, it's a little bit goofy to even call it a fort. It's very, 
very minor. Um, I like going from this direction. It's a little bit iffy because you need to jump up, but it's also, you know, you don't need to deal with all the BS that's up at the front of the fort. Just like this one dude. That's going to be a health one. We don't want that, but there is another one. I think it's here. Let me see. Uh, go around the right. Okay, now it's this way. Different, different fort later. Um, let's see. Head south straight for disappearing shiny. Next will be Fort Gale. Go around to the right and continue around for Flame Granny Strength. Okay. So we are going to swing all the way around here. And this is how you get into the fort. But we're going to take it just a little bit further. And we're going to get a really nice faith incantation. That gives you a 20% damage buff. Now it's guarded by these things. So you can try and fight them if you want. What I'd suggest doing is just dropping. Grab that. And head on over here. Grab that. And then run. So if there was ever a time to try out that uh, plunging attack thing, it would have been then. Now we could. There was one like right up front somewhere, wasn't there? I really do want to try it out. Oh god! Here we go. This is the Red Main Knight. They're probably the, like, the hardest regular enemy in this area. When I mean regular, I mean, like, not dogs or birds. I mean, as you can see, we're, we're more than sufficient to do this area. We're gonna clear everything here just fine. Some great bolts. Where were you? I really want to drop on that thing's head and try to... I'm gonna try and do that plunging attack. when you get stuck on objects. There, was right past them. This is more personal curiosity than anything. I'm just really curious to see what kind of damage I do doing this. or something oh <laughs> all right that is that was definitely worth deviating from the walkthrough and wasting time on that was awesome oh uh, i mean it's super cool but it's also like really situational you know like when when is the next time i'm gonna have a oh i have the perfect lineup to fall on this thing's head and explode it So now we're going to go into the castle proper. Let's head on up here. You can ignore the thing down below. Just run this way. Kill that guy. Grab the warming stone. We're going to head up top. Uh, so heading up top the ladder is going to be ascending gate. That ascending gate will take us all the way over to here. Uh, so I wouldn't recommend doing that right now. We're going to go there naturally a little bit later, so it's kind of pointless to, to take the sending gate there. I mean, it's a nice shortcut. It's just there's more stuff here we want to do. A uh, Star Scourge heirloom will give you five to strength, so that's always useful. Um, let me get over to there next. So we need to pop this railing. And then we'll jump across. Go on over here, and you can open the gate so that we can actually leave this place.
I think there was something over here. No? Okay. I know there's something over here. Around the corner for that. Uh, let's see. Break, jump across the gate. Mushrooms around the corner on the balcony. Drop down inside for Katar in the chest. And then kill the beast. Okay. Might be. I think there's like one or two dudes in here. No, I guess they're gone already. Alright, I'll pop this open. We get a nice little fist weapon out of it. Now we need to kill this thing. Now, y'all remember these beasts. We have uh, fought these things before. They're very aggressive. Uh, but, you know, it's not that we can't handle. I'm gonna hit one more of those. I, wanna, I want the frostbite proc. Come on, I made a frostbite. There we go. That gives you Lion's Claw. Really, really cool weapon art. Super aggressive. Uh, we get the Rune Claw. And then that's it. That wraps up this little area. Uh, so we're going to work our way from here. We're going to be heading kind of east and going down the cliffs a little bit. And right around here will be like a cave that we can go in. So let me uh, kill off our other markers just so they aren't in the way at all. And I believe that's our wrap-up point. Uh, Maybe? I don't know. Kind of already at 30 minutes. I feel like I should wrap up, but we can get in a little bit more. This cave's pretty easy. It's just a slight pain in the ass. So head east. There should be a drop with some loot right around here. Thought. Work your way east, grab a sombering four, then head down for jail cave. Stonework key is needed. There's that sombering four. There's that Sombering Four. I marked a Sombering Four in my notes, and that means there's just a Sombering Four around here. I think we went farther, farther out to get it. So I know it's like it's on a lower ledge. Which I don't even think we need Sombering Fours at this point. It might just be right here. Over here and take a look. Ah, there it is. There's our Sombering Four. A uh, bunch of dudes there, but you don't get anything. I mean, you can kill them if you want. A lot of, like, little weird little areas like this around here where it's just a ton of guys and they're all kind of guarding something. Yeah, you're like, what are they guarding? And then you go and it's like nothing. They're not guarding anything. So, did I get a pumpkin head drop? Nope, just a sanctuary stew. You can get their flails, and I really want one, but I haven't had it drop yet. Sadness, no loots. Used up all of those. Alright. We're gonna head on down. That little ghost would have led you right on into this place. Um actually jail cave is pretty long. Well let's get in there and then I'll take a look at the map and I'll see how we're at on time. But remember, if for any reason you are short on Stoneberg keys, you can always go back to one of the merchants you didn't buy them from. I think we've passed nine worth of merchants by now, and I mean, we've skipped a couple things. Um, but, you know, it's why we're, we're detailing what each Stoneberg key is for, because sometimes it's not worth it. You know, like the Mirror Helm? Big, big not worth. Pop this bad boy open, listen to the Rune Arc, and we'll rest. Alright, let me look at the notes. So we have... Do, 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 do. It's a little bit bigger here so I can see more. Uh, so we have Jail Cave, which is where we're at right now. And we have the Kalid points over here. Uh, let me go up here and there's some more stuff. And then the Abandoned Cave, which is over here. And then we have all of Central and Celio Crystal Tunnel and Southern still. I. It's definitely a lot left. All right, let's let's wrap things up here. I think we'll next episode we'll focus on double caves. We'll get both jail and abandoned done, uh, and then we'll head on into the the middle area. So we'll get our our more rot centric areas out of the way. 
time. So yeah, stay tuned. More Caleb will be coming your way in the next part, and I will see you all then.